is up guys welcome back to fit body secrets i'm coach cheryl where my goal is giving you guys inspiration motivation and a bunch of tips to help you be more successful on your fitness journey and today's episode is going to be a little bit of a remix of a meal prep masterclass that i did on friday mostly because i wanted to present it in a way that was a little bit more straightforward and oftentimes when I'm on a Zoom with clients, it's really easy to get off on tangents, which sometimes can be beneficial for you guys. So if you want to see the whole live recording, you can go into the Facebook group and see it there. But wanted to present this in a way that was going to be a little bit more straightforward for you guys, because honestly, my goal is to make fitness simple, make nutrition simple, and show you guys that you don't have to overthink things if you just stay simple and basic And everything else just kind of works itself out. And that's kind of the theme of why I did this, because when it comes to macros, I think people really overthink things. They really tend to to over overthink all the things that are necessary to be able to be successful with tracking macros and counting macros and, and all those things. I wanted to kind of explain to you guys why macros are so important and, and how you guys can understand how just taking the time to learn how to do this can actually leave you in a place of less stress, less frustration, and more of an understanding of how the food we're eating is going to completely, completely directly relate to how we're feeling in our life, how we're feeling in our, in the gym, and honestly, how our body looks and how our body composition changes. So um, let's kind of get rolling right into this. And I'm going to start with a brief overview of macros in general, in terms of like what we are you know, trying to achieve here. So let's go ahead and see if I can share screen. Here we go. So that those of you guys are watching on um, Facebook or YouTube, you guys can also watch this as well. So what are macros? And for a lot of you guys, this is going to be a review and just wanted to kind of know that I want you guys to know that I know that some people have already been exposed to what macros are and that some of you guys do not know what macros are. So Basically, macronutrients are the main sources of calories in our diet. So anything with calories has macros. So you've got proteins. They are going to be breaking down into amino acids. They're going to help your body with um, building and maintaining lean muscle, along with some of the neurotransmitters for your brain. And also, I didn't put this on here, but also for immune function and things like that. Every gram of protein has four calories. So if I have a hundred grams of protein, I have 400 calories. So it's a lot of protein to eat, right? Carbohydrates are going to be broken down into sugars, which become energy for our body to use. This is our body's preferred source of energy. And for those of you guys that are doing high intensity training, um, this is where our body is going to be pulling most of those from because it's a lot quicker for our body to convert carbs or sugar into energy than it is to wait for the process of breaking things down and all that kinds of stuff. So this is also a main source of micronutrients in our diet. So fruits and vegetables are a carbohydrate or carbohydrates. And that's where we're going to get a lot of our micronutrients from our vitamins and minerals. And they also have four calories per per gram. So um, four calories from carbs, I'm sorry, four grams of carbs is, sorry, (laughs) one gram of carbs is four calories. So if I have a hundred grams of carbs, much like protein, I've also had 400 calories. Fats, they get broken down and they help with a little bit of cell wall, um, protecting cell walls, nervous system, and things like that. A little bit about immune and and hormone function, but these um, we need a lot less of. They're a little bit more potent. So think of it like, uh, okay, great, great analogy is like stevia versus real sugar. So stevia is like, I think it's like 10 times as sweet. So you only need a couple of drops to make your coffee sweet where sugar, you might need a couple of tablespoons. So similar here, fat, we only need small doses of it. And nine grams, um, nine calories per gram is what we're looking at with fat. So if I have hundred grams of fat, I've now had 900 calories. So this is where it goes to matter for those of you guys are looking for body composition changes. It's if you understand that we've all heard it's a calorie deficit, it's a calorie deficit, that if all of our macronutrients are going to provide us with calories, dialing in our macronutrients is going to be controlling our calorie intake. However, it's going to be controlling our calorie intake in a way that optimizes how we are going to look, feel, and perform because we're going to be getting in enough protein. We're going to be getting in enough carbohydrates to fuel our lifestyle. We're going to be watching the amount of fat we're getting in. So it's, it's important to understand that macros is really a lot better of a way to address nutrition than just overall calories. Now, for some people, you know, you might want to take a, even if you're not looking at macros in general, 
you might be looking at your plate, right? And you might be doing like the plate method where I'm going to have a protein, a carbon, a veggie. It's still macros. If you're doing a low carb diet, you're still limiting macros from carbs. If you're doing a low fat diet, you're still limiting fats from, uh, you're living, limiting calories from fat. So there's always macros at the base of every single diet. And that's why understanding how to make meal prep simple for macro counters is what we're going to go over today. Um, and I did also put on here for you guys to see is that basically there's a couple of things that you want to make sure that you're doing in order to make sure that you're getting the, the, to make it as easy as possible to get the best results. Number one, you want to be within a macro range. This is not macro perfection. So if your goal is 130 protein and you're at 135, you're totally good. Some days, if you're at 145, you're totally good. So understand that there's a range there that we want to make sure we're kind of keeping consistency with, um, but you don't have to be perfect making sure that you're weighing out your portions, making sure that you're being consistent most of the time Um, and understanding that this also gives you some food freedom because all foods fit on a macro-based plan. Now, do we want to make sure the majority of our diet is coming from whole foods? I'm a big 80-20 person. We want to make sure we're getting in enough vitamins and minerals, but all foods can fit on this. This allows us to, um, to fit in some fun foods and some social meals and maybe a couple of drinks here and there. All those things are necessary. And the other thing that's really important is that your macros are individualized to you. That everything from how dialed in you need to be, how how close those numbers you need to be, your range, your needs are very individualized to you. So don't even don't even think about, so I get this all the time. Well, this person's the same size as me and she does the same training. Why is her macros different? Everybody is very different in terms of dietary history, what kind of medications you're on, what kind of stress levels you're on, your sleep, all that stuff matters. And, and honestly, just like what foods you like are, are different. What I like is going to be very different than what some of my clients like. So understanding that is, is so important when it comes to applying things. The other thing that I want to go over with macros is that the goal is never to be tracking or counting things all the time. It's always a way to dial things in and build a base that hopefully we're able to kind of maintain. Um, Like we should be able to learn from what we're tracking to like kind of repeat it and not have to stress so much about it forever. Now, when you're trying to work on a goal, yeah, you're going to be counting and tracking and things like that. It's going to make you more successful. A couple of problems that I see obviously is things like they're not planning ahead. Um, You know, they're just always under, which is often uh, usually a sign that somebody's usually not tracking things. Um, or they're still in this diet mindset of like calorie, calorie, calories. I got to watch my calories, um, not weighing things out, especially things like oils and butters and things like that, or the couple of chips they might grab while they're cooking. Uh, just not being consistent is another one. They're just, maybe they're tracking for a couple of days and they're off on the weekends. Um, and this is a big one I put on here. They're not including the foods that they enjoy on their macro-based plan. So they're not actually, they're, they're really trying to eat clean all the time. And they're avoiding those foods. And it's often why they have a hard time eating enough. Um, and then they also start to kind of, you know, watch, walk down the rabbit hole of like, I'm getting really frustrated. I want to get off this macro plan. It's usually because they're being too restrictive with it. Um, adjusting too quickly. So they just assume that if they're not losing weight, that they should be adjusting things. Um, and then the last one I put, it was like eating out too often. So I just want to kind of go over a couple of the basics before I kind of roll into this. Now, I'm going to be honest. I am keeping today super straightforward application based. I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole much more than what I already did, because I want you guys to understand that you don't have to overcomplicate things. This should not take me that long to teach you because it should be so simple. Okay. I put together a very basic food list and there are foods that are not on here that are likely still going to fit into your plan. But I wanted to show you where the majority of people's foods are coming from and how they fit into a macro-based plan. So you've got what I call mostly protein, carbon, um, fat foods, and then you've got some combination foods on the right. Because all foods, for the most part, are going to residually have a couple of the other things. So a lot of our our meats are going to have a little bit of fat. Some of them have more fat than others. Um, A lot of our carb sources might have a little bit of protein in them, or maybe a little bit of fat in them. You know, and a lot of our fat sources might also have a little bit of protein in them as well. Things like, you know, cheese and dairy and things like that. So I wanted to kind of explain that to you guys and also get you guys to understand where some of the things that people come to me thinking that they're craving aren't always the problem, right? So people are like, I'm a carb baby. I crave carbs all the time. No, you aren't craving carbs because if you're craving carbs, 
you're craving things like rice. And like, I'm talking about a bowl of rice with nothing on it. That's not what people want. People want a bowl of rice with like some beef and some salsa and some cheese and some guacamole. You're craving combination foods. And, and those do fit in on the plan in moderation. And you're going to see that on that list are things that are also combination foods that people eat very often, like protein bars. Um, so understanding where those foods fit into the plan are so important for you guys to understand how to make this flexible and sustainable for you. So, and if you guys want a copy of this, I'll actually just put a link to my email and you guys can email me and then we can, I can get you this. I even put like a list together of some of the suggested foods that I actually buy in terms of brands, um, because I want to make it super easy for people to find things, especially if you are looking for healthier options. You know, this is kind of where I kind of gravitate towards when it comes to the grocery store. I look for things that, you know, are going to be high in whole grains, not going to be just white processed flours. Um, although sometimes those things can fit into the plan. Um, I try to make sure that I'm getting good quality food. And these are the brands that I know that have I like the way that they taste. Um, they can be good for uh, convenience uh, and things like that. So just want to kind of go over that for you guys as well. And then the last thing I want to talk about in terms of macros is understanding that one of the main things that I think that people can get out of understanding the, the benefits of macro counting is that it does help you pay attention to your foods better. Most people eat based on one thing before they have ever been on a diet is how does this food taste? That's it. So it doesn't matter about anything else. Whereas when you go into an approach like this, you are going to be looking at a food label and understanding like, okay, a couple of things I'm going to look at. Number one, the serving size, how much bang am I getting for my buck? So if I pick up a box and I'm like, oh, these look good. I'm going to say, how many of these is a serving? And then I'm going to look at the macronutrients for those servings. I'm going to look at the fats. I'm going to look at the carbs. I'm going to look at the proteins. I'm also going to look at the fiber intake and the sugar intake if it's a carb source, just because I want to know, because um, I want to make sure that also the other macro I'm going to call that I don't, I didn't talk about here is, is fiber, but I'm going to want to make sure that I'm getting in um, a good serving. So if I'm going to pick up, like, for instance, I'm, I'm a volume eater. I would much rather have four cups of popcorn than have 10 tortilla chips. So I'm going to look at those things as well. And then the other thing I'm going to look at is the ingredients. I don't want you guys getting too hung up on ingredients. Um, I kind of go in more of an, I could honestly do a whole nother episode just going over like reading the ingredients list of a label and understanding like what really matters. And it really only matters for people that um, if you're, well, really, so thinking about in terms of like insulin um, and blood sugar regulation, that's why I kind of don't push a lot of um, white flowers, um, but food sensitivities and things like that there, you're going to want to kind of go into there. And there are some ingredients that I try and avoid just from a, a health perspective. I try not to get a lot of colors with numbers, a lot of the artificial colors. Um, I try not to get a lot of the um, trans fats or the, the high, highly alloic, alloic, whatever you're going to call it, um, hydrogenated oils, high oleic vegetable oils and all that kinds of stuff. I can't even pronounce that word uh, and things like that. But that was the other thing that I wanted to kind of go over today before I roll into the basics of everything. So kind of go into basically the way to make meal planning easy for you, macro tracking easy for you, whether you are on the go or you are like in a normal day, because these are the two scenarios that I get is a lot of times people are really dialed in when they're at home and they're in their own devices. But when they're like on the go on the weekends, that's when things kind of go out the window. And I think that learning how to have a plan is the best approach ever. People that don't have a plan plan to fail plain and simple in everything. You go to the gym and you go in without a plan. You're probably going to sit there and stare at the equipment for a little while. That's why most people like CrossFit or Orange Theory because they have a plan and they can go in there and they can execute on it. And I want you guys to think the same terms with your nutrition. So, you know, and this is kind of just like some things to think about, not necessarily any particular order, but I always start with my basic meals first. Like what are my meals that are always consistent in my day? Likely it's going to be lunch and dinner. For some people, they skip breakfast. Other people eat breakfast. So whatever meals, you know, that you always eat regardless, and then you're going to fill in the gaps. Like that's as simple as it is. So, you know, your main meals, if you're eating at home, you're going to look for where am I getting my protein, my carbs, my, my vegetables from what kind of flavor am I adding into it? How am I cooking it? And, um, and as I put in there, you can like learn how to create recipes and all that kind of stuff. If I'm eating out, I'm following the same guidelines for the most part. I'm just using foods that are already prepared for me. 
The biggest difference with eating restaurant foods is that oftentimes they're going to be using some cooking oils and things like that. So I'll usually just preliminary log a tablespoon of oil just to make sure of that. Um, same thing with the snacks. And then as I'm planning my day out, all I'm doing is checking the boxes, making sure that I'm going to be checking to see how these numbers are going to fit my plan. So that's as simple as it really is to meal prep for success. So now what we're going to do is I'm literally going to take you through two days. One is going to be a day when I'm at home and I'm preparing everything at home and I'm going to use food that I actually like. And then I'm going to do a day where it's like the weekend. And let's just say I'm going to be on the go with kids and soccer all day, because I think that would be the easiest thing for you guys to understand. There are no bad and good foods. There are no right and wrong. It's literally just learning how to make this work for your lifestyle, for your food, pre food preferences. And hopefully this is going to be helpful for you guys. So let me stop sharing for one second because I don't know how to change screens. And I'm going to be honest, my fitness pal on the desktop is way different than it is in your computer or on your phone. It's actually way better on your phone because once you start to use my fitness pal, you're going to see that there are foods saved, but it's a lot easier to select things in um, my fitness pal from your phone. So I'm going to start with a basic day. Now your my fitness pal might look a little bit different than mine because I've set mine up based on my lifestyle, but I'm going to keep it simple. We're going to go breakfast, lunch, dinner, two snacks. Okay. That's what most people like. And I'm going to roll with, um, I'm going to change my numbers a little bit. We're going to go with like, we'll go with 250 grams of carbs because most people aren't eating 500 carbs unless you're a high end athlete. So, uh, or are training a ton. So here we go. Breakfast. What do I feel like having for breakfast? Maybe I like eggs for breakfast. So I'm going to type in egg and maybe I normally eat two eggs and maybe I'm going to have a whole wheat English muffin with that. And I'm going to log some cooking spray for cooking the eggs. And I'm going to go with about a three second spray just in case. And then maybe I'm going to log, maybe I want some turkey bacon with that. And two slices is usually what I like, I like that. And maybe I decide that I want to add like some veggies in with my um, eggs. Spinach. And some tomatoes, that sounds really good. And now that I'm getting my, my head, I'm going to go with like a half a tomato. We'll go with a half a small tomato. And then maybe I'm going to add some like feta cheese on top. Cause that sounds like that would go really good. And maybe I also want a little bit of jam on my English muffin. And I use the sugar-free preserves. Smuckers is usually what it is. There we go. One tablespoon is about good. Now I will be honest, I will always recommend weighing things out. So even though I've logged things in like a tablespoon, when I look at my food label, it's gonna say one tablespoon and then in the parentheses, it'll say grams. I'm always gonna use the weight measurement, okay? Got my breakfast logged. And maybe for lunch today, I decide that I'm going to have, um, I made a like a burrito bowl and I'm gonna go with jasmine rice cooked. And maybe I have some chicken breast. And I'm gonna go with about four ounces. I'm gonna put some salsa in there. Maybe I'm gonna add some peppers and onions that I sauteed. Oh, look, it already announced it. So I'll go to Publix. Trader Joe's, perfect. Uh, what else am I going to add to that? Maybe some low fat cheese. Can you tell I'm a cheese person? I'm gonna go with Sargento. I like the Sargento Mexican. Uh, 
There we go. That sounds good. It's got some, so I've got rice with chicken, salsa, peppers and onions. And I'm probably going to want a little bit more volume with that. I, I like to eat a little bit bigger lunch. So I'm probably going to add some, like maybe a small bit of spring mix. And oftentimes what I'll do is I'll put my, um, all of it on top. Like I'll put, like I'll, I'll put the lettuce in the bottom, like a big salad. Um, that looks pretty good. And maybe for dinner, I plan to have mahi. And we'll go with about four ounces again. You know what though? I like to weigh my mahi raw or uh, cooked. So I'm going to go mahi cooked. There we go. Let me just check to make sure that there's nutrient facts there. Perfect. Awesome. And maybe I'm going to have some asparagus with that. Um, I normally would weigh just for making sure I'm getting my 800 grams of fruits and vegetables a day. Uh, shout out to EC Sinkowski for that. And maybe I'm going to have some, uh, what do I want to have with that? Had rice at lunch. So maybe I'll have some sweet potato. And I'm just gonna log about 150 grams and see how many carbs that gives me. That looks about right. And then I'm gonna add, maybe I'm gonna make like a barbecue. I like the G Hughes barbecue sauce on my mahi, make like a grilled mahi, barbecue mahi. And that looks pretty good. All right, so now I've got that stuff planned. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at where I'm at for my numbers. So right now I'm at 127 carbs. 37 fat and 122 protein. And my goals are 150, 70, and what I say, 250. So I've got enough room here for snacks. Maybe I'm going to have a post-workout shake. Maybe I want to have my first form of chocolate. Formula one. I'm going to have a scoop of that. And I'm also gonna have a half a scoop of ignition. Okay, got that logged in and I'm gonna see what that did for me. Perfect, so I got plenty of fat and I got plenty of carbs left and I'm getting pretty close to my protein, which is usually what people are under on. So now I've got breakfast, lunch, dinner, and I honestly have a post-workout shake. Maybe I'm also going to do a pre-workout snack. Maybe, um, maybe I'm just going to have like a, maybe a granola bar. Go ahead and log a Nature Valley granola bar. I'm going to way to the gym. I love those oats and hun honey granola bars. Oats and honey crunchy granola bar. Down there. So that'd be a good little pre-workout snack for me to have. And I still have plenty of room, which means I get to have a little bit of dessert. So I've got breakfast, lunch, dinner. I've got my pre and post-workout snack. And I actually might, you know, sometimes I'll have like an apple with my granola bar too, if I have the room for it. And now I can have dessert, yay for me. Maybe for dessert, I decide that I'm going to have a bowl of Greek yogurt. And I'm going to have um, some kind granola. Oh, you know what I'm going to have? Lily's dark chocolate chips. That sounds really good. And maybe some strawberries. And I don't know how many chocolate chips I'm going to be able to afford yet, but I'm going to figure that out right now. Okay. So now I'm going to look back and boom, would you look at that? I'm actually over on my protein. I am under on my fat and under on my carbs. So I'm actually going to double my chocolate chips. Let's go with 30 grams, which is going to be amazing in that Greek yogurt. 
then that looks like a pretty decent size snack. 100 grams of strawberries isn't a whole bunch. I know that just from, you know, if, if I did a cup, let's go with a cup and see what that does. Just so you guys can see in terms of volume, what that looks like. So I still have plenty of room. So I'm going to go ahead and do, um, let's go with like 150 grams. It's probably really about the same. Yeah, perfect. All right, cool. So I got plenty of room and I'm a little over my protein. So I can actually look back and if I wanted to, I could take some protein out. Uh, like maybe I want to just do three ounces of cooked chicken at lunch. And that would take that down. Now I'm just going to look back at where I might be able to plug in a little bit more uh, fat and a little bit more carbs. So a simple place is on my lunch. I don't really have any, like a whole bunch of fat there. So maybe I'm going to add a pack of that holy guacamole. Now I can fill in the gaps. I can have one of those little guacamole packets and that's going to add a little bit of fat for me. And you can see I'm not I'm not like limiting myself. I'm actually increasing things, right? And now I look and I'm going to call that a, a, a good enough day. I've got my goal was 250 carbs, my goal was 70 fat, and my goal was 150 protein. I still have about 10 grams of carbs left. I still have a little bit of fat left, but that's a perfect day. And not at all restrictive in any way, shape, or form. I've got a good quality breakfast, eggs, English muffin, turkey bacon some veggies in there, some cheese. I've got a, a really good lunch. It's going to make me feel satisfied. I've got a pre and post, post workout snack planned in. I've got dinner. I've got a snack and I feel like that's going to be plenty for me. And this also doesn't include any supplements I'm going to have. Um, if I wanted to have coffee in the morning, I might add some creamer to that, but that's a sample day of like me being like planned in. Um, and for you guys that maybe don't want to cook, think about how easy it is to have this stuff already ready for you. Right. The eggs take two seconds to cook. Um, if I wanted to buy pre-cooked chicken and pre-made rice, I could totally make a microwave meal there. And dinner is literally just throwing some mahi in the oven while you're getting yourself showered up and ready for bed and good to go. Now, let me show you guys a sample day of, it's gonna be chaos, I'm gonna be on the run um, and I'm not gonna have any time to meal prep. I'm gonna literally have to be eating out all day. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm always going to make sure that I have a protein shake with me because, and a protein bar, because those are going to be the, an easy way to get a snack in that's high in protein. And I'm not going to have to stress about, you know, what people are snacking on at a convenience store or things like that. Um, and if I don't have access to that at home, I can often usually find that easily at a, at a, a gas station, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to log as if I didn't have anything brought with me, I'm going to be logging as I go. So we left the house early this morning um, and we know that we're going out to dinner for dinner. We're going to go to an Italian restaurant, um, but I know that I, I've been able to look at the menu and they do have grilled proteins on hand um, and I'm going to be able to get something there as well. So for breakfast, um, I'm going to stop at the gas station anyways. I'm going to grab a core power shake. Those are usually um, pretty high in protein. And I can usually find the one that has less carbs. Perfect. Because I'm also going to get a snack of that. Cause that's not going to, I mean, just drinking my protein in the morning, I'm going to be hungry. Right. Um, and maybe they also have an apple there. Or I'm going to grab and I'm going to grab a granola bar. Cause that's easy to find at a gas station. And look at that. I'm going to be good to go. I like the oats and honey one. There we go. Cool. Got my breakfast logged. Um, so we're, we're done. We, we got, got, we got gas. We're on the road. We're going to the play the kids soccer. Um, maybe we stopped at Starbucks or uh, maybe we stopped at Panera. We stopped at Panera bread and I'm going to grab a salad. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm typically going to look up the restaurant menu, Panera Bread, because we have smartphones. And the first thing I'm going to do is even if I'm in the car, I don't have to be in a rush while the kids are figuring their stuff out. I can take five seconds and figure out what I'm going to have. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the menu. Uh, honestly, I don't want to think too much about it. So I'm going to go to salads because I haven't had really any nutrients that day yet. Uh, and I'm going to take a look and see what I, I like the most. The cool thing is that most of them already have 
the calories on there so I can get an idea of for things. But I also know that most salads are a little bit stingy on protein. So I already know that I'm going to look up maybe this strawberry poppy seed chicken looks pretty good. I'm going to open that up and usually I can see what it um, has in there. Perfect. 14 fat, 35 carb and 24 protein. I'm going to go ahead and order that, but I'm also going to add an extra side of chicken. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and log the Panera strawberry poppy seed, Panera strawberry poppy seed. And it says the whole salad is 340. And it has, I just want to double check my nutrients to make sure I'm grabbing the right one. And it doesn't have to be 100% perfect because you have to know that they're all going to be somewhat different from case to case. And I'm going to log that and then I'm going to log Panera side grilled chicken. And they probably don't have it. So I'm just going to, so if they don't have it, I'm just going to do a grilled chicken. And I'm going to ask them, how much extra chicken do you normally give? And they're probably going to say like two ounces. So I'm going to go ahead and log two ounces of chicken. Perfect. Cool. Now I'm going to take a look and that's going to be a pretty decent salad for me. Maybe I actually want the bread. You know, maybe that is something that I want. So I'm going to look at that baguette, which I believe it says it comes with. Maybe I want just a half. And let me go ahead and log a Panera baguette. I believe it's at 150 calories, right? We're going to roll that. That one looks good. All right. Got my baguette logged, half a baguette. So I can see now where I'm at, but honestly, I'm going to be probably pretty good for now. Maybe my snack, I went ahead and I brought a protein bar. I brought a first form. and an apple. Cause that was easy, got a small apple. And then maybe for dinner is what I have left. So now I can see where I'm at. My goal is 250 carbs, 150 protein and 70 fat. And I still have plenty of room. So we're going to an Italian restaurant for dinner. And I know that I've kind of been on the go all day. And I know that I've got this goal. And I want to stay somewhat dialed in. Um, so I'm going to actually opt for, maybe we're going to an Italian restaurant, but I'm just going to use Olive Garden as an example. And it doesn't have to be Olive Garden. It can be really any Italian restaurant. But the cool thing is, is that you can use this to log other Italian chains as well, because they're all going to be pretty much the same. So maybe I'm going to get the Olive Garden salad, or I'm going to get like a salad to start. And I'm going to get the dressing on the side. And I'm going to go Olive Garden dressing. Two tablespoons. And then maybe for my entree, I'm going to look at what they have. And I'm actually not going to do that right now. We're just going to go with most of those restaurants are going to have some kind of a grilled protein. Maybe I'm going to have Olive Garden chicken. Oftentimes what I'll look for is um, on the menu, um, they usually have like a lighter fare option. And if I click that, I can often find things that are a little bit easier for me to, to track or log, or they'll have like a, um, a uh, option that's, usually like gluten-free or whatever. Oh, look, here we go. Easy. 
I've got grilled chicken margarita. I've got herb grilled salmon. I've got sir sirloin. Plenty of easy things for me to choose here. I'm going to go with the grilled chicken margarita. That looks like it'd probably be pretty easy. Let me take a look at that. Grilled chicken breast with fresh tomatoes, mozzarella. Oh, that sounds amazing. I'm going to actually ask them if they can do it without the sauce. So I'm going to go ahead and type in, what was it called? Grilled chicken margarita, Olive Garden grilled margarita. And it said 540, right? Probably have a lot of fat. Well, not too bad. Yeah, 27 grams. But it's got plenty of protein there. So I'm going to go ahead and log that. And that probably does include the side of Parmesan broccoli. So now we're going to go over what this looks like to me. All right. I'm a little over on protein. I'm a little over on fat, but I'm also a little under on carbs. When you guys are going out to eat and you're trying to do this, this is what I want. I don't want crazy stress about being spot on. In fact, maybe you also want the breadstick right? Everybody loves those Olive Garden breadsticks. Olive Garden. Okay. So I'm okay with this. The numbers are a little bit off, but that is consistency. That is, it wasn't a perfect day, but that is tracking macros the right way. Now, this is me showing you guys how to be really dialed in on a day off. The last thing that I want to show you guys is maybe it is a day where like you want to actually enjoy something that there is something that you are really looking forward to and you're backtracking from that meal. So that's a meal where that's a day where like, you're just on the go crazy, have to kind of make the best of it. Now you've got a day where like, you've got a social plan to go out and you guys are going to do dinner and drinks at dinner time. Maybe you're going for, um, sushi. Okay. Uh, maybe I'm going to have sushi. I'm going to have a salmon roll. And maybe I'm also going to have a, I know that I want to have a, also a tuna roll, sushi tuna roll. And I'm just using the, the green dot check mark ones usually is what I'll find if I can. Um, because it's going to be easier to kind of, it's not going to always be accurate, but at least I have an idea. There we go. Perfect. Whatever. I'm just going to log those two things. Um, and maybe I don't really want to drink. I know that I would rather have sushi. That's who I am. Maybe I know that I also have that um, the little salad with the ginger dressing. I'm just going to type in like Benihana salad with ginger dressing. I like the experience and I'm excited for it. And then maybe I'm also going to have the miso soup. Benihana miso soup. Maybe that's what I really wanted, right? Perfect, done. All right, so I've now logged the meal that I wanna have for that day, okay? Once again, my goal is 150 carbs, 250 protein, and uh, 70 fat. So now that I've got that logged, I can backtrack the rest of my day. Maybe for breakfast today, I decide that I wanna have oatmeal. I love my oatmeal. And Quaker instant oats. Okay, got that logged in. Maybe I'm going to have some first form uh, milk chocolate mixed in there. I love protein oats. And I normally don't use a whole scoop just like usually a couple of tablespoons, which is about 20 grams. And maybe I'm gonna make that with some cashew milk. And I'm gonna have coffee. And maybe I'm gonna add, oh, it looks pretty good, got oats. Maybe I'll add a little bit of, bit of peanut butter to my oats. Perfect. Maybe for lunch today, I'm going to have a salad. And I'm going to put some, didn't need to click that twice. 
gonna put some, uh, what do I wanna put? I'm gonna put artichoke hearts on my salad today. Artichoke hearts. And I'm gonna use some of those roasted red peppers. And maybe I'm gonna add some feta cheese. Can you tell I like cheese? And maybe I'm gonna add some balsamic dressing. I use the Newman's own. And what else? I gotta add some meat on there. So maybe I'm gonna add, maybe I have like uh, some leftover cooked chicken breast. Easy. I usually prep that in the beginning of the week. Putting about three ounces on there. And I need crunch. I'm a, I'm a crunchy kind of girl. Um, so I like to take a, a pita bread and toast it. So I'm gonna go with a two Fion is the brand that I use. Whole wheat pita. Yeah, I'll typically toast it up and put it on there. All right, cool. I got breakfast, lunch, and dinner logged, including my sushi and my salad. Okay. And right now I'm at 181, 52, and 96 protein. So I know I got to get more protein in and I still have more carbs and fat, right? So I'm going to go with a yogurt for a snack. I like the Too Good brand. And maybe I'm going to have some blueberries with that. And maybe I also want to add a little bit of peanut butter into it and make like, oh, maybe I'm going to make like an acai bowl kind of acai bowl, a little yogurt bowl. So I'm going to sprinkle some of that on top and maybe some granola. Like the kind cinnamon oat clusters, oats. They're my favorite. And I don't need that much. I just want a little sprinkling. So I'm going to go with like 30 grams, probably plenty. Perfect. So I've got breakfast, I've got lunch, I've got a little snack, I've got dinner, and I still have plenty of protein left over. I've got fat and I've got carbs left over. Now I know that this meal is likely where I'm going to be lacking some protein. Actually, no, it's not. I'm actually looking pretty good. It's actually my breakfast is lacking a little bit of protein. Um, so that's because I didn't have my eggs. So maybe I'm going to have one more snack before bed. And maybe I'm going to make a protein smoothie bowl. Actually, no, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have the yogurt before bed. That sounds like a better like little nighttime nightcap. And maybe instead before, um, for a, an earlier snack, I'm going to have some cottage cheese. I like the break stones. And I'm going to also have some popcorn because I like that combination together. I like the lesser evil. All right. And I look at where my numbers are. Okay, I'm still a little bit under my protein, but everything else looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now is I know that this meal is going to be an, a meal out and that there's likely gonna be some changes in, in obviously accuracy in the calories. So I'm gonna call this an okay day. I'm gonna leave it at that. If I'm still a little bit hungry and I want something else, I might have a little bit more protein later on in the day and be a little bit over. But this is a showing you guys how you guys can also make things fit in the plan. So I know this episode is like super basic and hopefully I kept your guys' interest because I know it's also kind of boring, but I wanted to show you guys that if you just take a few minutes to plan things in ahead of time, you're going to be good to go. And that's really how making macro tracking work for you is. <laughs> that's how we, well, what am I going to say? That's why making macro tracking work for you is the right thing is, is learning how to do this because now you're learning about all the foods that you're eating and you're able to be more successful long-term. So 
long episode, more of a meal prep masterclass revamp, re, re, rewind, whatever. I'm, can you tell I've been staring at my computer screen talking to you guys for the past hour. So anyways, hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you guys did get value out of this, if you want a copy of that little cheat sheet that I put together, there's also actually a recipe cheat sheet I made as well. Um, let me know and hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Bye.